this video, I'm gonna show you how I turn a couch into a $2,000 driving public safety hazard. <laughs> the plan is to take a couch and add some wheels, motors, and electronics to be able to drive the couch using only a PS4 controller. First, I had to order some things to get this couch to drive and order I did. <laughs> I'm talking wheels, I'm talking tires, I'm talking axles, chains, motors, bearings, electronics, I'm talking the metal, I'm talking the science, I'm talking things that are gonna make this couch roll, son. Um, thank you for that. Now on to cleaning up this couch. Now luckily for me, I actually picked this couch up for free off the of Facebook Marketplace, and the first thing I did was cut out all the guts of the couch to reduce weight and free up some space. Next, I ended up cutting off the legs as we're upgrading to wheels. Using measurements from the couch and the components, I created a 3D model in SolidWorks of the frame, the drivetrain, and the steering system, ensuring everything would fit nicely under the couch. Alright, alright, enough talking. Let's build this thing. So the first thing I had to build is the frame. And I built the frame using one inch steel tubing, and in fact, about $400 worth of one inch steel tubing. So please like the video, that really hurt the bank account. And you know, like or subscribe might make me feel a little bit better about it. This is a pretty easy process, I just had to measure my metal, cut it, and then weld it based on my 3D model. I really enjoyed this part because I just got a brand new flux core welder, and this was a great project to break it in, and a good project to learn how to weld. I had a ton of welds I had to complete, and I got better and better as I went. Now with the bulk of the frame complete, I moved on to creating the steering system. First, I gotta set the bead on my tires because as of now, they don't hold any air. I did this using fire because I'm a pyromaniac, and it made me feel pretty badass. Here I'm attaching two go-kart spindles to either side of the front main axle. This is what the wheels go on and allow them to turn. Putting on one wheel, two wheels, two wheels turning. This is a huge linear actuator and it's going to control the steering for the couch. For those who are unaware, a linear actuator is like a big arm. It pushes and pulls with great force. And so all I have to do is figure out a way to connect the linear actuator to the wheels. And that's it. And then I'll be able to push the wheels to turn one way and pull the wheels to turn the other. My solution is to weld two steel plates around this pipe, which will allow the linear actuator's linear movement to be transformed into rotational movement. I then use some 3 8 inch threaded rod and some bolts to connect the steering system to the wheels. Now what I've learned from previous projects is that you can never build something too strong. And this linear actuator can push and pull with 800 pounds of force. And so I don't want it to rip my whole cart apart. So I'm adding a little bit of extra support. All that's left to do is to mount the linear actuator on a rigid spot of the frame and have it connect to the steering system. Now the wheels will be able to turn left and right from the pushing and pulling of the linear actuator. It's not bolted in yet, but you get the point. Now I think it's time we build the drivetrain system starting with the main axle. Most of these components are just basic go-kart parts that I picked up online. For those who are wondering how I picked my sprocket size, I basically just picked a sprocket that I knew would fit under the couch with enough clearance that it wouldn't be hitting the ground, and then designed the jack shaft to get the correct gearing ratio I wanted for the couch. And just like that, we're rolling. This is the jack shaft I was talking about. The jack shaft basically just changes the gearing ratio, and in my case, reduces the RPMs of the wheels and increases the torque, because this thing's not gonna be easy to move with three guys on it. I then welded on the brake which gets activated when I pull this small lever. However, I'm not gonna be able to pull that lever when I'm driving, so I had to weld on some little pieces to allow me to brake by pulling on a metal wire. Now before I can add any of the electronics, I need a spot to put all this stuff. I cut down a piece of plywood and this will act as our build platform because as you'll see later in the video, there's a lot of electronics that need to fit on this. Now would be a good time to go over the general electronics of the project, and I'm gonna do this in 45 seconds or less, starting now. The couch is powered by two motors, each controlled by an electronic speed controller. To power these motors, I had to build a custom battery using 320 18650 cells, all spot welded together using nickel strips. The final battery had a nominal voltage of about 72 volts, a capacity of about 40 amp hours, and 150 amps max current draw. The red thing I'm adding is a battery management system which has many safety measures integrated into it to basically just prevent your battery from exploding, because that does happen. A little foam for protection and tape for waterproofing, and our battery is complete. The battery also powers the horn, underglow, and steering, as you can see from this mess of electronics. This board is the brains of the couch, and is what allows me to control it with a PS4 remote. Perfect timing, by the way. Now let's finish this frame.
Now it's time for the final assembly. My motors didn't come with motor mounts, which they said they did, so I had to build some of my own, which was no problem. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do a more in-depth video as to how I built the whole thing. I feel like I skipped over a lot of the parts, especially the electronic circuit. So if people are interested in knowing how that works, I'm open to do another video and explain that whole system. Looking back on it, I think two motors was maybe overkill for this project, and I probably could have gotten away with one. I just plopped the electronics on there for now, but I eventually secured them down with screws and a lot of duct tape. In total, there are three chains, two that go from the motors to the jack shaft, and one that goes from the jack shaft to the output sprocket. Like I said earlier, this basically just increases the torque, so I'll have no issues carrying a lot of weight going up hills and going off-road. I added some support beams at the front and back of the cart where I added mud flaps to to prevent water, dirt, and debris from getting kicked up into the electronics. I also used a trash bag to help protect them because they're pretty delicate and I can't have anything breaking. Just so the battery doesn't slide around, I'm creating a little frame for it to hold it in place. Now time for test one. As you can see, when I pull the right trigger, the wheels spin. It drives just like any RC car, just on a way bigger scale. The steering works just as you'd expect, and when you turn the left stick right, you go right, and when you turn the left stick left, you go left. The underglow turns on when you click square, which is pretty awesome, but my personal favorite comes when you click the triangle. This horn is no joke, and for that, I'm sorry neighbors. I attached the couch to the frame using about 10 bolts going around the perimeter, then I added a brake lever to the wires we had left on the mechanical disc brake. Now after welding on a footrest and cleaning up the couch a bit, it's done. To use the couch, you simply remove the cushions, remove the plywood, drop your battery in there, and make sure to plug it in. You then reassemble the couch, hop on, turn on the PlayStation controller, and ride off into the sunset. So that completes the build of this project, but I'll give you a quick sneak peek of my next video where me and my friends take the couch to Burger King. Alright, so Can I get a big Mac? Girl, you got me shook from the way your body looks Got me riding hooks, got me feeling like a rook I don't do it by the book but I'm I'm <laughs> Are you on the verge of crippling debt because you spent way too much money on an electric driving couch? Because I am.